Why are you surrendering to Zod? I'm surrendering to mankind. Superman is one of the strongest characters in all of comics. He's known as being almost unbeatable, but who have been his strongest opponents over the years? I mean, Superman has to have powerful villains to pose a challenge, right? Somebody tried to clone Superman, but ended up with opposite Superman. Here's a list of the strongest villains Superman has fought and defeated. Let's get started. I'm here because I'm the baddest of the bad. Darkseid is the Lord of Apocalypse and probably one of the biggest threats to the entire DC universe. And that makes him a fantastic Superman villain worthy of the Man of Steel's abilities. I imagine it's always hard to write villains for Superman since Kal-El is inherently supposed to be the most powerful person around. But Darkseid is an adversary that can truly challenge the hero. If left unchecked, Darkseid could probably take over the entire universe in his quest to find the anti-life equation. And and in a lot of ways, I think Darkseid represents the opposite of what Superman stands for. The Man of Steel represents hope, joy, freedom, light, while Darkseid represents oppression, darkness, and complete control. Thankfully, Superman has been around when Darkseid comes knocking, and even though it usually takes a large group to fully stop the Lord of Apocalypse, Superman is the one to deliver the Darkseid beatdown. And I know it's not comic related, but I've always loved Superman's final fight with Darkseid in the animated Justice League cartoon. It's here that Superman delivers a fantastic speech about how he feels he lives in a world made of cardboard and always has to be careful to make sure he doesn't hurt anyone too badly or destroy anything, which the cartoon suggests is always a concern of his. But Darkseid represents a unique opportunity for Superman in this moment to cut loose a little bit because Darkseid can't take it. I love that scene. And in the comics when these two come to blows, it always feels like two titans trading punches back and forth. And on top of being incredibly strong, Darkseid also has one of the most powerful weapons in the DC universe, and that's his Omega Beam. Shooting lasers from his eyes, it's an almost unblockable beam that could disintegrate anything it touches or teleport a person throughout time. Only a few have been able to block or withstand the full force of the Omega Beams, Superman being one of them. It's a shame that the old DCEU couldn't get their act together to properly deliver a good Darkseid story, as now it seems like we'll never see Superman and Darkseid trade blows in live action action for the foreseeable future. Oh well, if you're desperate for that, check out the animated shows and films, as well as comic books to get that fix. When making a list of the most powerful villains Superman has defeated, it's really hard to not put Doomsday near the top. I mean, yes, Superman has defeated Doomsday, but the villain was so ferocious and so powerful that it cost Superman his life. That's an achievement not a lot of villains can truly claim. It puts Doomsday in the Hall of Fame of Superman villains, and their fight was totally epic in the comics. The live-action Batman v Superman Yawn of Justice made it so that Superman had to sacrifice himself by stabbing Doomsday with a Krypton spear, since Doomsday was made from Zod's body and therefore Kryptonite was the beast's weakness. But I've always found that to be a lame conclusion. In the comics, the two literally beat one another to death, drawing every last bit of strength from each other until the very end. It's a brutal, bare-knuckle fight that basically boils down to the two arguably strongest beings in the universe just wailing on each other until their bodies give out. Of course, both of them are resurrected and live to fight other battles, and it's never truly easy to defeat Doomsday. Like, one time Superman had to send him to the end of time, which is a fun alternate solution for your problems. Superboy Prime is insanely powerful, and you could make the case that he's the strongest villain that Superman has ever faced. I didn't put him at the top of this list because I thought Darkseid and Doomsday were more culturally impactful villains to put higher, and because Prime's history is so complicated. He started off as a hero, turned into an insane villain, and then redeemed himself a bit at the end. He's an alternate universe version of Superman, and because of the events of Christ on Infinite Earths, Prime's universe was erased, leading this hero to be trapped in a different dimension. But during that time, Prime's morals were twisted and corrupted where he thought his great destiny as a hero was to be the only Superman across the whole multiverse. It's established that Prime is definitely stronger than our Superman, making him extremely dangerous. He has a history of traveling to different universes and totally decimating everyone there, proving he's one of the most dangerous threats in existence. He eventually redeems himself a bit by sacrificing 
forcing himself to hurt the Batman who laughs, aka the Darkest Knight, but he left a lot of destruction in his wake. It's interesting that a few of Superman's greatest and most powerful villains are just alternate versions of the Man of Steel. I mean, that's probably the easiest way to establish a big threat to Superman, right? Well, next up, I want to talk about one of Superman's most famous enemies, Bizarro. He's incredibly straightforward. He's a Superman's doppelganger and generally does everything the opposite of Superman. Superman wants to help people, Bizarro wants to hurt people, and most versions of the characters see him twist words around to mean their opposite. Like, if Bizarro says to you, me hate you, then he wants to be your best friend. If he says, me love you, then prepare to get your butt kicked, that sort of thing. And Bizarro is interesting because due to him being around for so long, there have been a few different origins for the villain. Like, back in the old days of comics, Superman was hit by a duplicate ray. Pretty simple stuff. Later versions of the character would see Bizarro be a failed clone created by Lex Luthor, and another time, it was established that Bizarro was an idea from the Joker brought to life by Mr. Mixopedalic. Wait a minute, can we go back to that first one for a second? A failed clone created by Lex Luthor? If that's the backstory for Bizarro, then why didn't Batman v Superman use Bizarro instead of shoehorning Doomsday into that final battle? Sure, I get that if you have the Death of Superman arc, you need Doomsday, but now I feel Bizarro might have worked in that story better. If it was Bizarro instead of Doomsday, then that would have fit with the theme of the movie. Throughout his runtime, Batman v Superman establishes that Superman is sort of hated throughout the world, so wouldn't Bizarro have better represented that theme? Like, all of a sudden, there is now an evil version of Superman that's everything the world actually fears, and our regular Superman has to sacrifice himself in order to stop it. But I digress. Bizarro is a fun villain, but I've always been curious if he would actually work as the main villain of a Superman movie. His motivations are usually pretty simple, so it's hard to make him a feature-length baddie. But then again, the Superman and Lois TV show did a good job with that character, so why not? Put Bizarro in a movie. So in the DC universe, there's the Monitor, which is a powerful entity who records the Positive Matter multiverse. Cool, right? Yeah, overall, mostly a good dude. But then, of course, when you have someone like the Monitor, you have to have the Anti-Monitor, who's the Monitor's evil brother, and let me tell you, their Thanksgiving dinners and holiday family gatherings must be awkward. The Anti-Monitor controls the Antimatter universe and is one of those, hey, let's destroy everything type of villains that really causes a headache for the DC heroes. Now that Darkseid is off the table for the foreseeable future, if the DCEU ever really gets going again and tells their massive multiversal war story, it seems like the Anti-Monitor would be the best villain for that, right? Well, in the comics, the Crisis on Infinite Earths storyline sees a crazy multiverse story, and it ends with Superman being the one to eliminate the Anti-Monitor once and for all. I mean, the Anti-Monitor had basically every single amazing power ever, from antimatter manipulation, reality alteration, energy absorption, and so much more. Brainiac may be the most powerful Superman villain ever, not in pure strength form, but in the way he can never truly be defeated. Anytime Superman goes through the hassle of beating Brainiac and stopping the evil robotic alien entity from absorbing the universe's knowledge, it's usually always a temporary solution. The writers can always be like, oh, actually, Brainiac backed up his hard drive somewhere else and has rebuilt himself. That's a major bummer. So Brainiac's main ability is his superior intellect, which allows him to plot evil plans and build almost anything he desires with the right parts. He is one of the smartest villains in the universe, and his main goal is to acquire even more knowledge. Superman has beaten Brainiac a bunch, but due to Brainiac's ever-increasing skill set and overall intelligence, it always feels like it's getting more and more difficult. If I was a betting man, I would bet Brainiac would be the villain of the next live-action Superman movie. We've never seen this baddie on the film side of things, unless you count his sort of adaptation in Christopher Reeve's Superman 3. But looking at how more and more movies and projects are exploring the idea of the evil algorithm, Brainiac is more prevalent now more than ever. He could challenge Superman both physically and also intellectually, which I think would be a fun challenge for the Man of Steel. Hey look, it's another evil version of Superman. This one is Ultraman, who is the last son of Krypton from Earth-3. Over on Earth-3, things work a lot differently, and he's truly the opposite of our Superman. Over there, Ultraman gets his powers by absorbing the energy from green kryptonite, and actually had a vulnerability to sunlight, which, as you know, is the complete opposite of our Superman. This creates an interesting dichotomy between the two characters, and when the two finally come to blows, it's pretty epic. On his Earth, Ultraman formed the 
the crime syndicate and did such metal things like throw Superboy into a volcano to trap him. It's hard to talk about these characters overall because thanks to all the reboots, their backstories have changed. But a really fun superhero animated film is Justice League Crisis on Two Earths, and you can see the two trade blows there. How do you guys feel about the idea of an evil Superman? Do you think it's an idea that's overused? Being a Kryptonian from our universe, General Zod is very much the most comparable villain to Superman from a skill level. All the other Superman variants I've discussed so far usually have a deviation that makes them different from our Superman, but General Zod is pretty much exactly the same power and weakness wise, which means whenever the two fight, it's usually pretty even. Superman has the advantage of knowing how to tap into his Kryptonian strength better than General Zod, but on the flip side, Zod has had years of training as a soldier and is very tactical and strategic as a fighter. Yes, Superman usually always wins because he literally has to or else the world would be enslaved, but their fights are always pretty even. And if it was anyone else having to fight the villain, they would most likely kneel before Zod. Okay, on a pure strength level, Lex Luthor is probably the weakest on this list, but that doesn't mean Lex isn't powerful. He's one of the smartest minds in the world, and his determination to destroy Superman and his ideals using a ton of money and intelligence makes him one of the most powerful villains around. I mean, he's found a way to become the president of the United States like multiple times in the comics, even after his bad guy history, and it takes a lot of power for that. Yes, Superman usually needs someone to punch, but Lex Luthor knows how to plan epic counter moves to inflict a lot of pain and suffering to the Man of Steel. And to be fair, sometimes Lex does have a super suit of armor that allows him to at least sort of stand against Superman, mostly thanks to its kryptonite infusion. Mongol is the Lord of War World, which is a giant gladiatorial artificial satellite planet thing that traveled the galaxy picking up new combatants to fight against each other. Yeah, I think Mongol and the Grandmaster from the MCU would get along rather well since their whole deals are sort of similar. But the one key difference is that while the Grandmaster is clearly not much of a fighter, Mongol has no issue stepping in and delivering a major beatdown himself. There's nothing really special about his powers, but he's just a super strong, super durable alien who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman. And Mongol has had a few iterations over the years, with each one becoming more powerful than the last. I don't know how DC can do a War World adaptation with Thor Ragnarok sort of putting its stamp on it, but Superman being trapped on a different world could be fun. Rogel Zar is a relatively new villain compared to everyone else on this list, first appearing in 2018, but he's quickly become one of Superman's most powerful foes. He's an alien monster hunting for surviving Kryptonians, so of course Superman is pretty high on his list. Also, it was revealed that Rogel was overall generally responsible for Krypton's destruction, making him a very personal enemy for both Superman and Supergirl. Rogel was basically the secret weapon used by a rogue member of the group known as the Circle to help destroy Krypton once and for all. Rogel has been seen to be just as strong and durable as Superman, while also having this gigantic axe that can cut Superman's skin. Gnarly. Superman constantly has to deal with both Earthbound threats and greater cosmic ones. The great thing about cosmic threats, though, is that usually the Justice League gets to band together to help out. After all, everyone wants Earth to survive, so why wouldn't they be around? Well, one of the big cosmic enemies for the DC Universe is Imperiax, who is the embodiment of entropy and has been around since the dawn of time. He's the one who destroys the universe and rebuilds a new one. But the trouble with that is that our heroes, like Superman, generally like this universe and want to keep it around. He's colossal in size and is just pure energy inside a giant suit of armor, and Superman has been part of groups that form to stop him. The best way Superman has stopped Imperiax is when Superman flew into the sun for an extra power boost and then was able to send Imperiax and Brainiac's consciousness back in time 14 billion years to the Big Bang and destroyed both of them. Hank Henshaw generally hated Superman and wanted revenge due to an accident that left him in basic cyborg shape. After Superman's death due to Doomsday, Hank formed a new body from a birthing matrix identical to Superman and became a cyborg Superman, and overall he's just a huge pain in Superman's side. He's strong and also extremely smart due to his cyborg tendencies, which means he has complete mastery over a lot of technology. Thanks to the mimic and cyborg cloning, cyborg Superman has all the same powers as Superman. But you know what they say? don't mess with the original, and Superman is clearly the stronger of the two. Fun fact, Hank has been a member of the Sinestro Corps and was given 10 yellow lantern rings and has even collected a few green lantern rings to use and have in his possession. 
All right, two cyborgs in a row. Metallo is a classic Superman villain that's fueled by the very thing that kills Superman, kryptonite. Whenever Superman gets close to Metallo, the villain can just flash his chest, in a non-provocative way of course, and show the big kryptonite heart that keeps him alive, and Superman is immediately in trouble. As a cyborg, he's had a whole range of amazing cybernetic powers, and even with the kryptonite, Superman still usually winds up winning their fights. Or, you know, he could always call in a friend to whoop Metallo's metal butt. You don't have to be a pure brute strength villain in order to be a threat to Superman. Sure, most villains on this list like to trade blows with the Man of Steel, but Mr. Mixelpedalic offers a more unique challenge. And although he's maybe not as dangerous as, say, Darkseid, Mixie does possess reality warping abilities that put him on a whole different level than a lot of other characters. He isn't a character you can really punch away either. No, you have to trick the trickster into saying or spelling his name backwards, which sends the deity back to the fifth dimension for a few months. I like Mixie because whenever Superman faces him, he has to use his intelligence rather than his fists to win the day. Okay, for the next Superman movie, who do you think Superman should fight? Who do you think poses the biggest threat and can make the most narrative sense? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching CBR. See you next time.